We are back and good to go with the first match of the day. It is going to be Chansu versus Surrender, and it's going to be Druid versus Warrior as well. So the sole Druid as Chansu is going for round two this week in terms of resubmission of this list. What do you what do you think of this Druid as we take a look at the list? Yeah, I mean, Token Druid in and of itself is kind of not in a great place, I would say, in the meta, just because um, it seemed like Chansu brought it last week to try and beat Mage, but it seems like there are more viable Mage counters, in my right. opinion, like Hunter and Shrivala Palette. In. And the token druid uh, often can get frozen by mages and things like that. And that's already in a matchup that you wanted to queue into. But now Tonsu has queued into a bomb warrior, which is very unfortunate for him because Warpath kind of can solo the deck. But of course, um, token druid just being itself for time imm immemorial could just have these nut draws where they right. curve out. Um, sometimes a Whispering Woods gets unanswered and then you're just dead the next turn. So there's potential there. Yeah, sometimes you know your opponent can't clear the board, which means that you can just savage draw out of nowhere and just get the win. Uh, key cards really for me are just the, the other ones featured there, but Soul the Forest is so important in making your opponent just have a much harder time at being able to actually clear off the board. As every minute you kill, like two two comes back in its place, at least based on what's on the board. The Forest Aids will help out a little bit if the game goes long, but I personally feel that Warrior at the moment can make the games go as long as they desire actually they can actually speed them up a lot based on if they just get the mech tempo that they're kind of known for right now yeah and speaking of mechs we've seen some token druid lists floating around on ladder and other places where um, you have more of a mech package, maybe two of a micro attack controller, and including things like a replicating menace. But Chonsu has not chosen to go with such a package. Instead, is running the Mark of the Loa um, list, which is a bit similar to what he brought last week, actually. And um, if I recall, he did go 0 and 2 last week with the Druid, yep. so it was a bit of a mystery to me why he's bringing this again, but clearly he's got some confidence in it. It is, and there's multiple things when you come to deck submission of. There's, there's level one, you think the deck's good and it's going to win games, right? That's straightforward, but maybe it's more comfort, he's been playing this deck the most and thinks it's good, maybe had a lot of success on ladder, um, or maybe you think, one, my opponent won't think I'm going to bring it again, so they won't be prepared for it. So it's just a lot of questions here, but we're going to really see if Chance is able to do it. So we can check out Surrender's Warrior list, and then start to just name cards that destroy token druid. Uh, Brawl <laughs> is very good without um, the Soul of the Forest, of course, but then you look at mainly for me the Dynomatic along with Warpaths are just savagery. It's absurd because you pretty much have four board clears full as well as developing minions itself. But talk to me a little bit about this Geppetto Joy Buzz because it's an inclusion we've seen in Warrior before, but not without certain other cards that just aren't being played right now. Yeah, I think over in Europe, it was Casey who brought this Geppetto list last week, even though it's a, looking a little bit different now without the Barista in the primary. But Geppetto, it seems like it's just good overall because you would like to draw a lot of these cards for even cheaper, just like Dynomatic, where the battle cry is much more relevant than the body itself. Same with Blastmaster Boom. And uh, it is just more cycle when you're not running the Weapons Project and Harrison package in the primary, which Surrender isn't. And it has fallen out of favor with Rogue falling in popularity as well. And uh, when you mentioned naming cards that destroy Token Druid, I wanted to name half the deck. I mean, right, I was just naming up. the big ones. Yeah. Because even when you look at uh, this specific list as well, it uh, has some of the anti-aggro tech, I'll call it, with double attorney and rover to start off with. A lot of people are using that as a flex spot to cut. But e to be honest, even just playing on curve actually does well versus Druid because all their minions are quite small without multiple layers and buffs. And if you just two for one, like their tokens with your minions, you normally end up at least even a lot of the time. And then you have these backup plans of Brawl, the uh, the war pass. I do finally, someone, and it's Surrender of All People, which is great, has included double Brawl in the primary list, which is something I am a fan of at least. I feel like being able to just swap one of the sort of more flex choices out and having this two second Brawl is a big, big deal in a lot of the matchups we've seen in the past. Yeah, and the other spot where a lot of people argue about whether it should be one or two of is the Town Crier which is another card which just on curve will do well against a token druid but um, a lot of people say that the two just makes it so consistent but I think the one of won't hurt him as much as including another brawl of course so I think surrender is totally fine with this and uh, doesn't look like he's going to be swapping off the primary if I think uh, I'm looking at the list correctly just to deal with token druid 
Yeah, we can, um, even just in general though, I think Bomb Warrior is such a solid pick and I'm surprised there's only two in Asia Pacific this weekend because there are so many flex cards, uh, like you, the Time Cries you mentioned, Eternal Rovers, people have even been cutting Omega Assemblies in certain lists. Uh, there's so many flex spots that I feel like the deck, the core of the deck is very, very solid and it means that you can just lean it whichever way you think the meta is going to go, but keep the strength of the core deck because you look at, say, Holy Wrath Paladin, you can't change too many cards in that deck because you need the deck to function within that specific combo. Mm -hmm. Whereas this warrior from Surrender is so flexible when the cards like Geppetto Joy Buzz are being included. And we saw, for example, last weekend, Tyler had the Cairn Grom package mm -hmm. as well. So, And the deck still shuffled bombs in, still put pressure on with mechs, still plays both booms. I think the deck's super strong right now. Yeah, and we see that a lot of the secondary or tertiary lists, depending on how you order it is meant for the mage matchup, and that's when you start running things like BGH. But I feel like in the future we could be seeing people run just more early curve stuff. Right. I want to see frothing berserkers and yeah, warriors. just 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 kill them so we don't even yeah. get to turns that you need BGH anyway. But let's go into game number one: Chansu versus Surrender, and it's going to be the Token Druid versus the Warrior. And already. Uh, we saw a fairly quick mulligan from Chansu there, but Surrender, we've seen a lot of players keep, say, for example, one Omega Assembly just to hold on for it in the matchups where you do on that early curve. It does look like Surrender's got rid of it, though, because as opposed to, say, the Mage matchup, I feel like you need slightly less the curve and more the actual cards that kill stuff. Yeah, and I think with the abundance of one-drops, uh, Sorry, it's three, not four, but those are still things you would much rather play. Right. Just the Eternium Rover, its interaction with Acorn Bearer is just so good for you. You gain so much armor, it often kills two things, and then it makes every following turn awkward for Chansu, maybe even forcing a hero power. So I think Surrender was searching for that. Didn't quite get it, but he got Warpath, which is just the best card to yep. see in your hand when you are dealing with Token Druid. And even now, very similar, I feel, to the Zoo matchup. Uh, Militia Commander never stops being good mm -hmm. as well. You kill something on the turn, you play it. And guess what? In a, in a token deck, to attack is often just more than enough to get the job done to at least get some clears. So now the Attorney Rove is in hand for Surrender. When you go into a matchup and you literally just run into turn two and you already feel that one player's got a huge advantage, you know something's gone wrong somewhere, right? Yeah, in the submission maybe, but I don't want to be too harsh on Chansu, of course, because um, he has got things to do going into turn three and turn four with the landscaping and Vargoth. As for Surrender, it's already an interesting choice as to whether he wants to drop the rover off curve, maybe even coin an Acolyte, although I feel like holding onto the coin is very valuable here. Um, just playing the rover on two, I don't hate it. Yeah, I think this is... This is just fine, isn't it? You know, you, you miss the hero power, but you gain it back by it with the minion anyway. Yeah. Having a minion obviously better than not. I don't think I would have been too upset with coin acolyte, but I think being able to coin into say an extra warpath when you shouldn't be allowed to is actually just more valuable over the long course of the game. And surrender doesn't need to dig. Well, that's insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> surrender doesn't need to do the desperation dig, right? Like coin Acolyte as quickly as possible to draw into these answers. Mm -hmm. Surrender already has them, which means that he can play this game at least fairly comfortably. The only thing he does have to watch out for is the, the random deaths that can ha happen where you it's like, okay, I'm not dead to this, but I am dead to double Savage Roar. And, if, and Surrender just needs to dodge that at, at all costs, basically. Yeah, and he's got the perfect hand to do it. He's got removal, he's got armor, he's got boom, and the Acolyte will eventually provide card right. draw. Although I don't necessarily like it this turn, because um, if you play the Acolyte, you're probably training the 1-3 into the 1-1, and then any buff on the 2-2s two means that they can one-shot the Acolyte. So I wouldn't mind even seeing Coin Militia Commander here and then trade off two minions. The Commander still has three health and can challenge the remaining Treant. Yeah, and anything that moves towards softening up the board anyway isn't terrible, but I think this is Surrender really just saying, ah, I'm fine. Uh, yeah, I, I, if the board ever gets weird, I just warp at it away. If it ever gets uh, awkward again, I warp at it away. Then I'll have played Boom, <laughs> and then all my mechs do crazy things. Yeah, I mean, even worst case scenario for Surrender here, which is, I guess, something like Dreamway Guardians into Power of the Wild, he's just super fine still. Yeah. Like. Uh, sitting on all this removal into the boom, I don't know if you could feel more comfortable as a token druid. I mean, as the bomb warrior. I guess, like, either... It's funny, I, I was going to say, I guess either brawl or pl cheap playable minions are the, are the only thing that makes his hand better. But that's literally his deck uh, right now. It's pretty much... Ru <laughs> the, the, oh, God, I'm 
good. Um, there's like his, his deck is either removal or relatively cheap minions that have high, impa high impact on the board. So this is looking good for Surrender. He's just going to deal with things like this 2-5 because the 2-5, anything super high health, same with Vargoth as well, you need to make sure those die because you often can't just warpath them away and especially Vargoth. Vargoth's a card that can win games on its own. Yeah. So Chansu here, he's been playing his turns relatively quickly, although he's got quite some options here. Just going for the Saladra's Wrath is a lot of value, although that type of board is more vulnerable to a warpath, for example. Um, he is just going to drop the tempo 2-6 here just because it's hard for the warrior to deal with this early on. And as for Surrender, obviously he'd want to clear the Vargoth, but he has no great way of doing it. So I'm thinking just going for the Omega Devastator here doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, it's probably the most likely minion or most likely play that he's actually going to set up a kill on, on Archimedes Vargoth somehow, right? Because you need that extra push to be able to, say, Warpath next turn. Because this Vargoth is super scary to leave up. And Surrender's got no choice, as you mentioned, so he's just going to go for the Devastator. Chansey, though, needs to just, I think, kind of just go for it right now. I don't think his turns are getting any better than Vargoth being on the board, yeah. which means just play spells that Vargoth will recast and go again. Is, he gonna, is that hero power? Huh. huh. Yeah. yeah, I was surprised to see that too. He could have gotten additional value off the Wrath as well, but he probably did not want to put that in the Vargoth pool. Uh, I actually thought he was just going to plus one, plus one. Yeah, another buff, right? Because mm -hmm. having potentially three or four minions, high health, means that even if Brawl comes down, well, you often end up with something big. And if Brawl doesn't come down, well, Warpath isn't clearing any enough anyway because of the health total. It's possible that he wants to save the plus one half of the spell for the Whispering Woods in case this board gets right. cleared. At least the next board has a buff on it that won't just get cleared by a Dynomatic. We see that it will get cleared by a uh, Warpath eventually. Uh, but now Surrender has to decide if he wants to pull the trigger on the Brawl immediately. Chansu's done a good job of making a board that is not too wide and still relatively tall, so the Brawl is not completely comfortable for Surrender. I wonder if he can get away with... Okay, so his options, he could have... He can do this, which is Warpath, clear everything, but the th what will be a 3-1, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. Uh, I was wondering whether he just plays, like, Militia Commander, double trades into Vargoth, and then just says, okay, you probably don't kill me this turn, so I'll make a bigger board, and then the, the Warpath's going to clear up everything. Yeah, I think that was worth considering, but maybe scary if Chansu had another uh, tall buff instead of a wide one. And I guess. we knew that he had a, um, I don't know the names of the options that you get from Power of the Wild. Uh, it, it, leader of a pack and summon a panther. Oh, you can read Raven. Yeah. Better than me, apparently. I did know the summon the panther one because it is straightforward. I think it's I It's literally what the card does, summons a panther. <laughs> That's it. I was talking to Language Hacker last week about it, but yeah, the other one's called Leader of the Pack. So, is this going to be His a self wrath? Yeah, he's just going to cycle, gonna cycle okay, and okay, get okay. the two cards, so that buffs up the Whispering Woods for the next turn. Uh, Sir Henry just has AoE for dates, though, although he might not necessarily pull the trigger on the next one, because now he has this option to go for Wrench Caliber Militia Commander, although. He will take either three or four in the process, depending on which one he wants to hit with the weapon. Mm. I was wondering whether he just plays boom, but it's too unsafe. Because one Savage Raw nearly gets uh, Chansu there, yeah. so Savage Raw put plus buffs that you know there's something in hand at yeah. least. means so. that it could just be game over, so he does have to play a little bit more defensive. So Chansu has um, 11 on board, and with Savage Roar, that's another 10 damage. It's 21, and then he can play the leader of the pack for 25. So right. Boom technically has Surrender out of range of that, but he does not want to be taking that much damage. So I do think it's going to be some type of clear here. Uh, even just another Warpath with the shield block, I, I, I don't think, hate either. I think this might be the coin turn. Militia Commander coin weapon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kill off two minions, leave two, two attack minions on the board. Yeah. You're pretty safe. You do take some damage, but... 
you also have a Militia Commander on the board, and then next turn there's Warpaths with Shield Blocks, or even Brawl as well with a Shield Block, depending on what Surrender wants to do. I kind of like this turn. Yeah. It's a good turn to use the coin. It was my first instinct. It, it's that delicate dance you have to do as Warrior with like, how low can you go Limbo, haha, <laughs> before um, you have to start armoring up instead right. of just clearing every turn. And the thing about the Militia Commander and the Wrench Caliber is that they're more conditional clears than the Wrench Caliber is. Uh, sorry, than the Brawl and Warpath are. So I think it's good to get that out of the way and then sit on your more efficient removals. Also, it means with the Wrench Caliber locked and loaded, it means that there's a potential that just the weapon swing means you can actually land Dr. Boom. Because I think landing Dr. Boom is super important here. But you need to create that gap to be able to do it. Uh, Surrender will need Chansu to have a bit of a weak turn at some point to be able to land it safely without dying. And maybe that ends up being turn 10 along with shield block just to gain a ton of armor to try and survive through. But Chansu's doing a, I think, a very good job of just putting enough on the board that makes Surrender not really want to brawl but have to do other things. Yeah, he's been parceling out the threats um, in such a way that Surrender has to constantly be threatened, as you mentioned, and he's still sitting on another uh, refill with the Whispering Woods and Soul of the Forest, which is um, only answered cleanly by Warpath, and we've seen one from Surrender. Right. So if Surrender pulls the trigger on the second Warpath here, Chansu could just run away with this game. Um, alternatively, Surrender could go for a brawl and then guarantee just uh, Caliber away whatever minion remains, and he can fit in a shield block on top of that turn. Yeah, I wonder if you just you could do that, right? Because Brawl is yeah. the most is the most consistent Brawl you're going to get because Soul of the Forest isn't down. Yeah. And there's oh, also just boom, boom Shield Slam, I think, is Ooh, fine okay, as well. Okay. I mean, two minions on board, it's very unlikely you're dying. Even Double Roar, I think, is just out of range. Uh, it would be, oh, lethal, be lethal with Hero, with the hero power. power. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but still, that is, like I was saying, it's just enough to get Boom down. But now Chansu's going to go in. And maybe this, I'm not, I'm not saying this was the, the priority one purpose of this turn, but maybe Chansu has got a read that Surrender doesn't have any more good AOE. Because for example, that turn you would have played Dynamatic mm -hmm. because yeah. it was just great, right? Yeah. So Surrender did what on the surface doesn't look like a great turn, but now this means that Warpath is just going to clean up. He even gets to have the hero power with the three tokens, which not the best hero power in the world, but against a token deck, if you just two mana summon three tokens, that's going to be pretty good on the backswing. Yeah. Chauncey is going to be very upset to see this. The triple warpath and shield block turn can work, although Surrender might not need to shield block and could just preemptively get those drones in there. Yeah, I think I like the drones. Because mm -hmm. the first time that Chonsu has had to really think about minions, right? There was the Omega Devastator played earlier, but mm -hmm. it was kind of insignificant because of how big Chonsu's board was. But these, I think... Uh, Chansu does have to be wary now. Yeah, it's definitely the drones. I didn't realize that one of the treants was still healthy, so he needed that last damage. Right. And uh, he does draw a refill, though. And he's seen both warpaths. It's about as good as it's going to get. The problem is he's got no buffs now, which means these are just straight 1-1s. One and Surrender did get the blast shield as well, which right. is something you always hate to see as any type of aggro player. And the game starts to slip away when this kind of turn happens, right? Because mm -hmm. Surrender can just brawl hero power pass if, if he really wanted to. And he very well might next turn. I mean, yeah. that's his best AoE remaining. Yeah, and, and he, he knows there's no Soul of the Forest now, right? Because Soul of the Forest would have been played 100% of the time that turn. Well, now he can't. He can do something aside from passing. That is an insane draw for Surrender. He can even clear the remaining minion with one of these rushing mechs. Also, so seeing, let me have a look. Seeing one swipe now, if he brawls and wrench calibers to clear the last one, he never dies, right? Oh, I, I, he misses the hero power though. That's, yeah. that's way, you can't miss the hero power. Not when it's the seven armor. Yeah, and the spark engine definitely yeah, jump, clears yeah. whatever it means. So, and Chunsu needs the forest aid off the top real soon, I don't think he has that many turns to wait because the boom just gets there. Uh, even Geppetto on curve is a big threat. I like uh, Surrender also using the minimal amount of minions, or minion power. He kept the, the spark engine just because it might be able to take down a, a Dreamweave or something, you know, just something else. Mm -hmm. 
What does summon a panther do? It summons a panther, believe it or not. So yeah, it does what it says on the tin. But this... Surrender's not out of the woods yet, though, because, like you said, if the, the forest aid is drawn within the next turn or so, you've got to remember, because like, it's twin spell, that is two sets of forest aid, which Surrender doesn't have great answers to, apart from just hope he has the mechs that can kill it. Yeah. So just going for Geppetto and Spark Engine here, I think, is superior to Ooh. going for three minions, because all the mechs can have rush, whereas the Geppetto on the board now means that it could potentially answer a forest aid minion should it come out the next turn. And suddenly you see that even with the beam one mana one ones, that's a one mana one one that deals 10 to a minion and has rush. The other one is a one mana one one with divine shield taunt and rush that effectively gives it to a minion along with life steal. So Surrender can almost do what he wants now with the safety of that Zilliax. I think for now, he wants to just get a mech on the board, so the, probably the, the copper tail, use the shield block to gain armor so he just definitely doesn't die, and then the turn after he can swing with the Zilliax on the copper tail and just say, nope, this game's over. I'm pretty sure playing out every single minion here never loses. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just lining out the base level plan. Mm -hmm. If Surrender wants to do more stuff than that, that is absolutely okay. fine. And honestly, this is surprising to me because we were saying that Cat Warrior is super, super favored, but Chansu was nearly there. Surrender yeah. needed three pieces of AoE. Granted, he didn't draw a Dynamatic, so I don't know if that's the average outcome of the game, but if Surrender missed one turn of removal there, Chansu easily could have Savage Roared for the win. Yeah, it's really close, and it's it's what I think are where as Surrender takes the win there, of course, where, where, Druid, where, where Druid is winning games, right? create the board, sometimes they don't have the clear, and Savage Roar adds so much extra damage along with, you know, maybe Blessing of the Ancients as well. So it adds so much extra damage to a wide board that your opponent can't deal with it and they just die. But I think, even if Surrender didn't draw all of those clears, well, the other side of his deck, our cards like Zilliax, like Dynamatic, even just playable minions on curve is a problem for Druid sometimes. So I think either way, um, Surrender was going to be in a decent spot at least, but that was only game number one. The players can switch around or mess with their uh, secondary or tertiary deck, but before we decide what's going to go on there, we're going to go to a quick break. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. What's up, Hearthstone fans, and welcome to the second episode of The Curve, where we draw the biggest headlines from this past weekend on Curve. I'm your host, Derek Brown. Let's do this. Florian Dawn continued their dominance in Asia Pacific, finishing with a perfect 4-0 match record. That brings Cloud9's overall record to 10-2, best among all teams with two or more members, despite teammate Calento's two losses in the European region. The group will look to stay on top heading into week three. Psycho's impressive run to start the season continued in Grandmasters Europe as he defeated both Yala and Swids to improve to a 4-0 record overall. Even better, he now sits at a perfect 8-0 game record. He'll look to keep his win streak alive next week as he takes on the world champion Hunter Ace. Despite the nerfs to Rogue this past week, two brave America's players, Monsanto and Strifecrow, decided to bring the class anyway. Their risk paid off though, as both players went 2-0 this past weekend. Monsanto leads the entire America's region with a dominant 4-0 match record, while Strifecrow sits in second place in the A division with a 3-1 record. With all of Hearthstone Grandmasters being front and center, let's not forget to check in with our friends in China. This year, China is running two tournaments that will lead into playoffs and then the World Championship later this year. We'll keep you posted on the Gold Open and the Gold Team Championship. In this week's Meta Moment, we continue to highlight the Mage. After a warrior infested week one, Mage came out to dominate week two. Of the 48 matches played across all regions, 42 of those matches contained a Mage. Outside of mirror matches, the mage class only had a 50% win rate, and yet it's still the talk of the town as one of the best decks. We'll continue to see if the deck can sustain its popularity and find out if it truly is one of the most dominant classes in this meta. If you missed any of the Grandmasters action, you can check out the VODs on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Hearthstone Esports. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. 
as Grandmasters resumes this weekend. That's it for us. We'll see you in the tavern. We're back to continue Chonsu versus Surrender, and it's a really huge matchup for both these players because we talked a lot about the top of the table, but within Division A, which is where this match is from, uh, both of these players only have one win so far in Grandmasters, which is a bit of a problem when you currently won at three. Uh, so every single win is going to be huge, but specifically because both of them are there, whoever wins this will go two and three, so that seems good, but then there'll be one and four for the other player, so it's only going to get worse for one of these guys. Let's check out the list that they have uh, changed to. I believe that Chonsu has moved over to his tertiary deck, which yes. is a spicy one. It's got a lot of trees, and Chonsu loves nature. I mean, we've got double force of nature, Tending Torian, and Scenarius, which um, all of them can spawn trees, and two of them also have the flexibility of buffing the board, which just works well with the deck. And then the one of Tree Speaker, which, if you guys don't know, can transform all the tree ants into, I think, 5-5 five, five Ancients, yeah. and that is just very scary, of course, for Warrior. And uh, Surrender, his Ter tertiary and secondary decks are not meant for this matchup at all, so I do believe he's going to be sticking on the primary, but it's sometimes... I question that though, because Super Collider can deal with two 5-5s, five but are you living in that world where your opponent can stick Treants and make 5-5s? Five That's the problem, and, and a lot of the time as well, if they're sticking enough to actually play a Tree Speaker, then they're often got more than two. It's, it's normally a dice situation if they're doing that on two, although of course it could potentially push 10 damage. But yeah, I, I don't know, this is a tough one, right? Because the, there's the more late game with some of the early game removed, so no Cable Rats and no Lackeys, no Dreamweave Guardians, which is two minions in one card mm -hmm. uh, and also no micro tech and the problem for me is that it's great having the late game and going long but bomb warrior can push you out of the early game very right. similar to the way it plays versus mage so with this early game removed or a chunk of it removed do, can surrender just actually play aggro now instead of playing the, the control deck and clearing the board does surrender just beat chansu up i think it's a very real possibility and we could very well see that play out as chansu's hand is very expensive at the moment and surrender has uh eternium rover on one he can eventually get to play down the alec although he did toss it away i'm a little bit surprised he actually threw the alec yeah maybe because he wasn't on coin but it's about as low curve as you're gonna get right i'm pretty surprised at that Maybe he still just wants to go for the removal game plan because on paper it is still just token druid. Like war pass are never gonna be bad. So as I mentioned that. earlier as well, there is the double brawl in Surrender's deck. So that is his main deck, which is the primary one, which is playing right now. So he does have double brawl. He has the Zillix, of course, the dynamatics that we didn't get to see in the last game. But but yeah, his removals kind of the same. I don't know. I think I would have liked to see the more aggressive line because th this pick and this play is an aggressive play anyway. So he could have actually just been guaranteed an Elec instead of fishing with an Omega assembly. That's yeah, pretty close, I would say. But uh, he did manage to find a play on to turn three with the Harvest Golem, but it looks like... Oh, that's... Here we go. Maybe the Golem ends up being a better play this turn because of Wrath. But if your opponent Wraths, are you that upset? I and you have just seen one Wrath, so I think he's thinking of how does the 3-3 three, three line up into Chonsu's turn 3 play, as opposed to the Harvest Golem. And turn 3 is probably something like uh, landscaping. So both of them are fine. But this is just the stickier minion, so... Yeah, I was wondering as well, with this turn into the turn 4 Goblin, the ordering might matter in terms of how likely it is to actually be able to magnetize a Zilliax which is also a, a big mm. deal, of course. Okay, and these are, are kind of like those turns, right? Surrender didn't have a good answer, and Chonsu's actually gone relatively wide. But now Chonsu has to choose. Does he just buff the board? Does he go even wider with stuff? He has come with that Blessed of Ancients for the Twin Spell, and he's just gonna, it looks like he's just gonna aim stuff to face and let Surrender deal with it. Yeah, I think this is way too awkward to trade into, and it kind of requires either 
um, dynomatic or a board clear to deal with for, sur for surrender. But in this case, he has the Zilliax, which is just an even better answer. Right. I was wondering whether there was actually... Th there are reasons for this, uh, mainly yeah, Stalandris, but the power of the wild know. does the same job this turn of plus one, plus one. Mm -hmm. And then you could have actually hero powered and just killed off the Harvest Golem completely uh, without too much issue. But I guess the problem is that plays more into a dynamatic because the fact that Surrender's got the two mechs on board means they're immune to the dynamatic effect. And it, it makes Chansu's board smaller, which means it's going to be more clear anyway. Right. So I think Surrender's just deciding what he wants to put the Zilliax onto. I feel like uh, yeah. if you put it on the Harvest Golem and then take two trades, you're very weak to swipe. Uh, conversely, if you put it onto the Clockwork Golem, if you trade the Harvest Golem, then you're getting rid of the body and I ending up with the I think he's working out whether he even wants to play Zilliax. He could go yeah. Town Crane to Guaranteed Militia Commander. That's true. And get two yeah. minions on the board and an instant trade as well. And because he's on 24, and uh, maybe he thinks he doesn't need as much healing. Now he's gone a bit like the other way around, where he's actually just put it on to yeah. gain an extra attack whilst being bigger as well. So he kind of cheated out the magnetize there for an extra, an extra additional attack. Yeah, I just completely forgot that the death rattle is a mech too. Yeah. So he just yeah. got three attacks for the price of two, and that's pretty efficient. And this starts getting scary now again for Chansu because Surrender is fairly safe, especially with this Town Crier this turn. And it means that next turn, it could be likely that unless Chansu puts forward a huge threat on the board, that Surrender can just get away with a boom. Just, just getting the boom down as quickly as possible. And then we saw how powerful the mechs are when they all have Rush as well. Yeah, and Chansu's run into this problem that you were talking about where by cutting out all of the early game, he's actually lost out on the early to mid game board. And he's kind of sitting there with these buffs that don't have anything to land onto. Mm. So I think he's going to be on this game plan of surviving until you can draw Forest's Aid, until you can draw things like Force of Nature. But is he going to get there? Honestly, no clue. Because I'll just throw my hands up right now as a terrible caster that I am. I have not played every wow. single secondary and tertiary deck against every single potential matchup. And I don't know how well this the, the Tree Speaker and, and the Tenon Tauren uh, with the Double Force of Nature works versus Bomb Warrior. I actually don't. I, I, I'm presuming Chonsu knows better than I do. So if he's playing a, a little bit slower and he's okay with a slow game plan, I have to assume it does work in testing. Mm -hmm. But it worries me that once Boom comes down, who cares yeah. if you surrender, right? Like, yeah, play your weird, you know, your long late no. game token to a game plan. I've got Dr. Boom with rushing mechs, discovered mechs, AoE damage, pressure. <laughs> it's like just yeah. everything. And with Jabal Joy Buzz, it's just eight mana draw, two cards that do something. It's, uh, it seems like Surrender's just so far ahead already. Yeah, with the draw of the second Militia Commander, he had the rare better than Boom on 7 play to actually just clear Chonsu's um, tall threat, which was probably the last thing he had to he had uh, to rely on to actually get some pressure going. Um, this is a decent swipe, but it is just being reactive and Surrender just gets more time. He does have landscaping into, uh, into the Tree Speaker next turn. So I think being a bit defensive this turn is fine. Mm -hmm. You set up as best a board possible to be able to just dump five fives on there yeah. and hope that's not enough. But this means that, dependent on the next card draw, of course, that this is going to be one of the safest Dr. Booms I've seen in this matchup. Yep. So if you're expecting something like landscaping into Tree Speaker, perhaps Geppetto is better here because it can challenge those five fives. Um, without mechs in hand to rush either, it kind of disincentivizes the boom a little bit. But again, boom, never bad mm -hmm. when you're in this safe of a position. Yeah, uh, I, I find myself always leaning into, if I can play boom and it's not bad, as in like, I can get away with it, I normally personally like playing it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does look like Surrender's gone for the Joy Buzz and can clear off his Acorn Bear, of course. Yeah. And with two mechs, uh, the boom can rush those out, although they're not really big minions Threats, right yeah. now. So. More likely, I think, that he would look for single target removal. Ah, some artwork that I believe less than 1% of the player base has ever seen. In the <laughs> tree speaker transform. This is kind of what I mean, right? Like, yes, the 6-6 six, six value trades a 5-5, five, five, but potentially your other turns aren't as good. 
Uh, I guess the other way around, it would be me no Geppetto this turn and maybe a Brawl with a minion. But I guess this this probably worked out better overall. I just worry that as a bomb as bomb warrior in this position, you might never have a good turn to play Boom now. Yep. I'm thinking it could be this turn just because the Brawl seems so lackluster, more likely than not your opponent uh, still has a beefy minion left up. Boom gets you to... So he chose not to hero power first, so... And I think that's fine because there's several outcomes that are better than just the two armor, but this is not one of them, unfortunately. So he'll remove five damage from the board. There's nine remaining and surrenders at 26, so double roar is another 12 damage. Not quite dead. But close. Close, yes. Surrender taking his time there, but I think he had to trade because even if it's not exact lethal, you don't want to be put down to low health as Dr. Boom because you might not hit that uh, blast shield for a long time, which means that you can't really gain much health, especially with no Zilliax. So Chansu has quite a few options here. The first one that comes to mind is going for like Squirrel, Power of the oh, Wild, yeah. Soul of the Forest, and then Hero Power of the Geppetto. He can push nine that way. Um, I'm unsure if you want to use the Power of the Wild for the buff right now and push 11 instead, or just mm. create another minion. I guess the benefit is it, it needs an additional warpath, right, if you use it now. And maybe that survivability is actually worth more. But it's going to oh, hold yeah. on to it. Yeah, this is probably better now. Just turn the Squirrel into a threat while it can be, and right. then just threaten the damage from hand. Also, this means that it would require a, like a full warpath turn from Surrender. And even then, it would not clear yeah. one of the Treants, so that's pretty strong indeed. But what is even stronger is double Devastators. Uh, Dynomatic can also clear things up, although I'm unsure of the proper order to do this. Probably Devastate the two um, bigger minions. Mm -hmm. Would you Devastate? Trade the 1-1 one, one Devastator into a Squirrel to pop, uh, bump it, and then Dynamite it, and then use the 4-5 to rush afterwards. Is there a way to... I think that I think that's the best, right? Is there a way to put exactly 5 health on board without Death Rattles? Yeah, you could rush now. Okay, so he's going to zap them both. This is a complex turn. Yeah, this is a uh, little I'm, bit tricky. I'm not going to... Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Doing this way. But okay. I'll leave it to Surrender to find the ideal way. And then he still gets... Uh, this, this is what I mean about getting Dr. Boom down when you can. Because you, you can do these turns. Obviously, the one-mana Omega Devastator helped a lot. But still, just the, the minions that remove stuff. And then you rush them to remove even more. Yeah. Suddenly, Chonsu's boards just doesn't exist. And that was through a Soul of the Forest. This shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, it really so shouldn't. Surrender's not drawn Warpaths, and he's not played the one Brawl he has drawn, and he's still fine. It's absurd. I'd go so far to, as to say as he's ahead, because now Chonsu is... This is his last minion threat, and the rest is conditional damage. And I don't blame him for this outcome, because that board he set up a while ago was so difficult for Surrender to clear. I think yeah. he needed exactly the double Devastators, or like some type of double Dynomatic Devastator yeah. play which you just cannot put him on having, so... Or I guess, like, Warpath mm -hmm. Dynamatic would have done close to mm -hmm. the same. This is just huge. One benefit here for Chansu is that Scenarius is a very high health minion, which oh, means that yeah, Dynamatic yeah. is greatly reduced in its quality because there is a chance that it just smacks the crap out of uh, Scenarius and it doesn't actually kill any of the other minions. Not a bad hero power for this turn either at all. Somebody order a bomb. And this thing can attack, right? Because he has played a spell. Mm -hmm. So that is just going to be full clear, I'm pretty sure. Uh, can he can he play aggressive? Well, he has dynamatic next turn. And he pushes mm, seven. Mm, I really okay. like this. Yeah. I really like this. It's true. I guess the scariest thing for him there, if he double traded, was Forest's aid, and then he would have to potentially expend the Dynomatic and other things that he'd rather have in hand. Whereas this is 
pushing the onus on Chansu to end the game right now. Otherwise, right. Surrender can just And go. the problem yeah. is, if he plays Forest Aid, will you already get trades? He's only got one minion on the board that can actually trade this turn. Yeah. Forest Aid's mm -hmm. often the whole turn, along with maybe a hero power. Yeah. So it means that, like, okay, you make your two twos, either you might be dead, or two of them are already dead, because you can make value trades in straight away. I actually really like this from Surrender. Yeah. I think it's really good recognition. And now Chansu can go wide again. And I think you do go as wide as possible and just uh, stick the Power of the Wild for buff onto those five minions. Right. He probably has to trade. Because Surrender is threatening 12 damage just with the hero power on his board. Oh, he's actually going to just make one tall minion ha after having seen several Devastators. Yeah, this Surrender, is interesting. Surrender's playing shield slams, but no executes. Oh, okay. And obviously his armor is not going to be let yeah. to be big enough. This is a really, pr such a pretty sick play. I yeah, didn't I think, think about this. Yeah, I didn't see that either, but I think obviously Chansu's had a lot more practice between these two weeks of token doing. The one thing I'll say is with one spell, this Tenaris is already dead, which is the one drawback, because Chansu mm -hmm. can see that Surrender's got deal three hero power, Yeah. which means that it's not as if Chansu was planning to make a big minion that Surrender could never kill. He just wanted to push as much instant damage as possible. Yeah. But now you see, start to see some of the questions with how you build Token Druid anyway, in that the card draw just doesn't exist. There's, there's no one's playing like Nourish, for example, mm -hmm. to draw three, or even the card I cannot remember, but the uh, the no minions, so you discover you discover the Druid minions. Light the muses! So I was thinking if Surrender actually wanted to maybe hold on to the Warpath there and just clear the scenarios with a different, uh, well, rushing in the Piloted Reaper, for example, and using the Hero Power, and then using Dynomatic to clear off the 2 twos after that, uh, it means he would not have been able to attack with that one mech. And that also means he would have given Chansu more time and cleared right. his own board. So I like the proactive play from Surrender. Don't even give Chansu the time to develop Forest Aid. And if he Speaking doesn't have the time to develop it, then you don't have to sit on your Warpath. And he also had Brawl anyway. Yep, he has Brawl for safety. He knows you can't Forest Aid and Soul the Forest in the same turn. So <laughs> Brawl does the job 100% of the time. Uh, and also as well, he's just pushed a lot of damage. He's one damage away from lethal right now. But that is... A very clean clear as well. Yeah. Just the kaboom, dynamatic. Oh, it's so good. Light the music. Looks like it's going to be a clean 2-0 for Surrender. I don't know what single card can pull Chansu out of this. We'll say, though, it was pretty nice that we got to see Tree Speaker doing work. It, it was cool. It was one thing I said last uh, last week with Language Hacker. I was like, I like the idea of the deck. And obviously, it's just cool seeing cards that don't get played so often. Yeah. But a congratulations to Surrender, though, because it was just a very, very strong win. And the question just keeps coming up for me is, I feel like Druid only ever really gets wins if their opponents whiff or if, if the Druid happens to just go mini, mini, minion, double Savage Roar or Savage Roar buff and, and kind of just does so much burst damage the opponent doesn't account for it and can't play around it. But those are very much like if scenarios and don't feel like a, a common, uh, consistent choice in the deck. Yeah, and the thing you brought up early on about Bomb Warrior having that ability to go more aggressive early yeah. on and Surrender very much recognizing when he needed to go face to um, not give Chansu any time to draw into his late game threats. And we saw the Forest Aid one turn too late. If it had stuck, then, I mean, it was actually much closer than it looked on paper, I think. Yeah, it was. I do think, though, that as well, because of the way that the game played out, I think Surrender using the Warpath as it, in a very meager way, I'll say, just used it once, was just uh, signifying that he was like, well, the worst thing he can play, I have Brawl for, and then I Brawl it, and then, you know, you end up just so far ahead. So I think it was just Surrender using some of his resources a little bit more looser uh, than normal, but because he knew he was so far ahead. And, you know, I speaking of Chansu, though, I, I hope, uh, you know, he goes to the drawing board and actually gets something changed for next week, because it's two weeks in a row. He might win his match, uh, his second match this weekend, but two weeks in a row that Druid has just not even looked, it's not even looked impressive to me. It wins the odd game here and there, but I don't think it's consistent enough in the field of decks that exist right now. Maybe it's better versus Rogue. Yeah, I completely agree. And we did see uh, last week, well, I saw as a spectator, of course, shout out to Language Hacker for being a great caster over the first two weeks. It was a pleasure to watch you guys. And um, that week, I think Rivius also had 
uh, yep. token druid, but he himself has switched off it. So now I'm kind of left here thinking, why didn't Chansu think to switch also? But um, we did see that those games went pretty close, so maybe there's a way to refine this deck even further. But I'd be remiss to see Chansu bring this deck for a third time. Yeah, well, one, you start just getting predictable, but mm -hmm. maybe it's predictable in such a strange way because it's, some, it's you keep queuing a deck that is not performing is a very strange way to go about it. But we'll see what Chansu does next week. He does still have one more match as well, so he's got a match a little bit later on this weekend, which means he could just want get a win, and that's one more win on the board. But for now, though, Surrender's actually going to go a two and... Um, two and three, which is sort of terrible quick math there, uh, <laughs> as he does end up just going, getting that extra win on the board now. So it means he is catching up because I feel like APAC at least, or at least Division A is very sort of lent one way. There are three players or so that are doing well and the rest are doing just the same, which is not yeah. good when that builds the bottom of the table. So it's a good job for Surrender. We've got plenty more matches coming up, but I don't know. I think this Bomb Warrior is the pick for this week for me. I, I think it's so powerful. And the tech choices, although maybe not the right way to build the mage, it looks like... Um, I, I think it can just do enough against all the other decks yeah. that exist. But we are just going to step away from it. I think we're going to see if we can get Surrender on a call. But if not, uh, you know, we'll be right back with the next match. But don't go anywhere. So you're probably wondering why I gathered you here. Let me take a moment and break it down. We've been given black eyes by the good guys. Oh, but that's about to change. Those meddlesome mortals who've mocked up our missions will finally feel some of our pain. You see, I have a devious plan that requires a demonstrative fist. And each of you will have your dreams come true as a fiendish finger of peace! What? All right. <sighs> Let me try this again. Alone, all our dreams went. Uh, kaboom! Yes! But united, we'll take a candle. No fish bigger! I'm seeing what you want to do. Let me hear it! We'll come together so we can dismantle! Now here's the plot to capture your greed and intrigue! We'll take Dalaran for all that it's got! <laughs> As we form an evil Now the cards show me a tinker, so clever, but kind of a stinker. In a storm that's a raging, sits the last one I'm paging, a truly unusual thinker. All bots are now gonna go boom, but still, you shouldn't assume that I've made this selection on my own direction. No, indeed, let's be clear. I have brought you all here, and now you're all in. It is time to begin. The cards see a heart that is stony, and a totem that's all kind of bony. This witch in such danger will soon be no stranger, cause she's gonna be our new crony. We welcome you into this room, and we promise your enemy's doom. Just one more who's coming. The last one I summon is a fella who makes things go boom. <laughs> the Asia Pacific Grandmasters. We've got plenty more matches to come up for you today. But before we do, I believe we have got hold of Surrender. So hopefully we can uh, uh, speak to him. I believe he, he can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. So first off, congratulations on your, your first win this week. Um, how have you been enjoying or dealing with the, the format of resubmitting every single week? Is that something you've enjoyed and you think you've been uh, successful with it so far? 
I don't think I'm having success with it right now. My score isn't that good right now. After after my lose last week, I didn't didn't go outside. I didn't <laughs> do anything without Hearthstone. I always played Hearthstone and practice. So okay. I I got top ten legend with my deck and managed to find a nice bomb warrior list. Okay, and cool. I, I think my practice paid off, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I mean, it looked like it did to me. Um, how do you feel about that matchup specifically, the Bomb Warrior versus the Token Druid? Are you are you super confident in it? Did you think you were just going to 2-0 anyway? Uh, at, fir at first, I thought it's a bad matchup for Bomb Warrior, but after playing like 30 practice games, mm -hmm. I, I knew that it was good for Bomb Warrior. Okay, it, you definitely made it look good mm -hmm. for Bomb Warrior, so I agree with you on that one. Did you think it was a bad matchup um, only against the Tertiary or just in general? And then uh, when you changed your mind, did you think you were favored even against the Tertiary? Um, um, I think it's, it's Bomb Warrior is bad versus his Tertiary deck mm -hmm. because he has a lot of um, big minions and yeah. And but at the, at the beginning I lost a lot because I didn't know how to use my um, AOE spells mm -hmm. when when to use it. But after playing like ten games, I I found it. Okay, uh, Raven and I were also wondering um, what was your reasoning for not keeping the Elec when you were in game two because it seemed like just playing one drop and then curving into a three drop was pretty decent against this tertiary deck. But of course we could be wrong. Oh, in the second game? Mm -hmm. Oh, I... Yeah, you, you threw Alec in the mulligan and ended yeah. up doing uh, getting Omega Assembly for one and then getting a minion from there. Oh, in, in the matchup, I always keep, like, um, Etonium Rubber and Warpath and Dynomatic Robot. So I didn't keep it. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so we just hard mull for those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Cool. So um, you know, thanks a lot and congratulations once again. We'll let you go and um, start getting prepared for your rest of your weekend. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, Surrender. Thank you. Okay. Well, some uh, good knowledge there in saying that he will actually go to an extent of mulligan away in a three drop and a good shape three drop as well mm -hmm. uh, against the druid just for those I guess hard win cards. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a cool to hear from Surrender. Glad we got him on the interview as well. I always push him like, speak English more, Surrender. It'll be great.